Um, we on at the intersection of Alondra and Central. To be specific, we are currently in Trag Newport. The reason why we right here is because uh, I was born in the city of Compton at Dominguez uh, Valley Hospital. When I was one years old, my mother purchased a home right down the street from here that she still owns. So um, when I first spoke with you, you was interested in getting the kind of the beginning and the origin of my life story. So we kind of started here for that reason. I didn't actually go to elementary school in here. I, I've never gone to a, a public school in my life. I went to private school. Um, the most, the, the first one was on El Segundo, also between Avalon and Central. We're between Avalon and Central right now, but um, it's our second location we had talked about going to. I went to school there, but I didn't go to school around here. And I assume that your mom was probably trying to put you into better quality schools. Oh, she broke her neck. She did her best. She did very well to for us to um, access better quality schools on my behalf. However, um, utilizing public transportation and just she chose to reside, you know, in the belly of the beast. You know what I'm saying? I got my bike took right there on that uh, in that tennis court when I was a kid. My nigga, uh, I, for, I, I forget the nigga name, but it was Scat and his brothers. They're not around here no more, but it was like a, a pack of brothers. And we was playing baseball with a tennis ball, but we was playing baseball inside the tennis court, bam. And I remember after we won the game, it was a nigga that was on my team. He was like, yeah, I was saying, we won, we won. And Cud just fired on me, bam. And when he fired on me, I looked up. His brothers was, that was on the other team was getting on my bike. My daddy had bought me a, a proper ass blue bike, like a BMX with the tires and the both brakes. They got on on my bike. I went home crying with my nose busted, told my mama. My mama took me around the corner and found they mamas and all that, and big old argument. First they mamas was like, uh, my son ain't took no bike and all that, woo -woo. but my mama got my bike back, huh? <laughs> on my mama, on the crib. Me being her only son, and me getting involved in the street life in my mid-teen years, I watched my mother wear out some pretty expensive living room furniture because she could no longer be comfortable sleeping in her bed because every time she heard a helicopter or a gunshot, she would want to check the blinds. And, and I remember our blinds, she used to have a picture window with the long blinds that had one little area where you could see she constantly used to peek out of, and she used to put dents in the couch sleeping on it. And uh, she, it's like, she didn't know what to think. You know, she got like such shocking bits of information at times that it used to just blow her mind. From what she knew, she had me involved in all type of church programs, private school programs. And then um, I believe I was in 11th grade. I was at the Fox Hills Mall during Christmas break, similar time it is now, shopping with uh, a couple of my friends. And I had to call and tell my mother that I shot one of my friends. So these are type of like reports she was getting when all she knew was she was providing me an environment that would exclude me from all those type of activities. And it wasn't turning out that way. So, you know, uh, put my mama through quite a bit of heartache that I didn't quite realize until I became quite a bit older and became a parent myself. I was totally oblivious to the heartache I put her through. And just so happened, like I say, the school that I went to primarily from kindergarten, like up until sixth grade, was located on El Segundo between Central and Avalon. It was called LA Union. But, however, we were separated by a chain lead fence by a middle school uh, named Mark Twain. And Mark Twain, for those that know, is a school that's legendarily known for raising bloods. So although I was going to a private school, we had one chain link fence that separated us from a school full of bloods. And, even, and we had some crips that was going to our school. It was a few real cribs that I remember. I grew up and kind of find out my nigga No Love from Raymond. Shout out my nigga No Love from Raymond Marquise. He was banging way back then. Davion from Harlem. It was a nigga from my school that I used to look up to. They was older than us. It was from, uh, one of them turned out to be from Raymond. One of them turned out to be from, uh, from Harlem. So other than that, it was a lot of wannabes. And I was included amongst the wannabes. Before I was a crib from anywhere, I was a cuz. And then the school was in a blood neighborhood. So. Well, just because we wanted to be Crips, we used to love to take our button-off shirt. Now we got on blue khakis and white t-shirt and walk to Burger King 
on El Segundo and Avalon and just try to get into shit. Like, not necessarily tripping on nobody, but kind of hoping somebody trip on us and I hope somebody say something. I remember we used to get down with a nigga named Rampool from VTP, from uh, Village Town Pyro back in the day. I don't even never know what happened to Rampool, but he was a young nigga right around in that era was trying to make sure that area was solidified with their interests. And I remember just having those type of like experiences. Although I wasn't actually involved, I was breaking my neck to be involved. And I remember at times being at school and we out on the yard just conducting a regular day. And because there was a crip presence in my school, although it was private and a lot of wannabe crips, and a lot of actual blood affiliates on the other side of the gate. It turned into quite a few times where it was big standoffs, niggas climbing the gate, threatening to climb over to one side or the other. Chairs have flown over from side to side. So even though we was going to a church school, that type of shit was present on any random day. I remember at one time, just being crip, my cousin, my first cousin, and um, is my mother's sister's son. He and I were basically raised like brothers in two different households. He lived in another household, another part of Compton. And of course I lived right here. Before I knew that this place was called Tragnew Park, I remember my cousin calling me and because he was riding in the car with his mother and noticed a sign in the park, he called me and told me, you live in 10 Drew Park, 10 Drew Park. So I remember at one point in my life being young saying, in my mind, I'm from 10 Drew Park Crib. I didn't even know how to pronounce Tragnew Park. So had I not had older brothers and more action at getting involved in gang activity in my daddy neighborhood, I would have ended up being from Tragnew Park. But I thought I was going to be from Tendrew at one point. I thought this shit was called Tendrew Park. I didn't even know. <laughs> I just wanted to be a crib. And how old was you at that time when you didn't even know how to pronounce it? 10, 11, something like that. What was the administration doing when all the little ruckus was going on? I mean, they would react accordingly, appropriately, try to defuse the situation, whatever that might be at that immediate moment, but it wasn't never treated like a situation they needed to address that was ongoing. You know, it's probably a lot more graphic in my memory than it was to them. To them, it's probably a bunch of kids acting silly, but I don't think they really understood the depths of the overtones and what actually could have transpired because it never actually went to a full all-out altercation. So I just felt like the you know, like I say, this is middle school. So I feel like the adults on our side just felt so superior over the age that they thought diffusing those little uh, outbreaks uh, was sufficient, not really realizing it was still a problem brewing. After sixth grade, and my mother starts seeing the influence of the environment being present in my everyday, although that was a private school, she caught herself getting slick and started busting me to Torrance from seventh to 10th grade. And if anyone is familiar with Torrance, it's about an hour bus ride west, um, southwest of Compton into an extremely predominantly white, fluent neighborhood. And it was the same similar private school, which was the other school is 70 Adventist, it's church-based. And it was a church-based school that was predominantly white. So she figured she would do, her, do herself a favor by getting me out of the immediate environment and send me there. But then she had to utilize public transportation, which is a whole nother beast within itself. So now I've become even more exposed to the actual elements of what's going out here, going through Carson all the way back to Compton every day on the bus, encountering all type of different motherfuckers that I probably wouldn't have encountered just riding with her to private school getting dropped off. So, you know, niggas started, like you say, got more, even more active because now I kind of knew more where I was going. My brother was already claiming the hood. So now no longer am I wanna be from track new. I'm a wannabe East Coast Crip gang member. So how many years older is your brother? And he obviously had a huge influence on you. Extremely huge. Big Spider is four years older than me. Then we got another brother that's named Slick that's like two years older than Cuz. So Spider was always like four years older than me. So you know, between 12 and 16, that's a very influential time in your life. You feel me? And my brother was a fool, like a real fool. So. He always set the mark high in my mind of what it's gonna take to be a low, you feel me? So, you know, I have big shoes to fill. I have two older brothers and a younger brother by my stepmother, who I also love. That's my mother as well, but, you know, Pops was a stone. So what did your mom think about you hanging out with your um, your brothers on she your dad's side? She couldn't stand it. She couldn't, st I mean, she used to always allow me to hang out with my brothers. Cause I can show you pictures of me and my brothers from Big Wheels and all that. That was fine, but. Them Crips, them bad boy, when they start turning into them boys, 
she she had a lot of conf conflicting feelings. You know, she had started. I can show you pictures of me and my brother, who is not her son. It's a big spider. I was eight. He was 12. She took us to Lake Tahoe. And uh, she thought it was cute to allow us to go to the little photo shit and put on Western shit and uh, meme up with the guns and all that. And I still have that picture amongst my photographs. It's just, it kind of marks an ironic uh, moment in what she actually tried to gear my life toward. And now I can show her pictures of me and my brother, grown men holding real actual pistols with a whole lot of real money and shit. It's just like real ironic. But yeah, she, um, she hated the fact that I had such a fondness for my brother not because that was my brother, but because he had chosen the lifestyle he had chose, and that was totally opposite for all the things she had attempted to instill in me. What did the people think over here when they started saying, he claiming East Coast and he grew up over here? Did well, you know, I have a lot of childhood friends that know my, that I, I went through this process every day with, so it wasn't hard for them to understand. But I could tell you something kind of funny from me being so heavily saturated over here and spending so much time over here, even when I was from my hood full-fledged, it's ironic that you hope throw up my hood like this and you throw up their hood like this. Crips is very lazy. So as we hit these corners throughout the years, it go any way, <laughs> any kind of way. Right. So a lot of the younger niggas seeing me with they homies so often and not actually being introduced to me and seeing me throw this up, I done have phone calls from jail but my homies like, cuz, this a nigga here telling me you from trying to do, cuz, like, Cuz, what you tell this nigga what's happening? I'm like, what's his name? And then it'll be a nigga that I, I really know who he is. And then we had to tell Cuz, like, no, Cuz, I know what you probably thinking, but you throw up track new like this, you throw up East Coast like this. So don't nobody make sure they do it either way. We just, so it's a lot of niggas who used to see, get so familiar with seeing me around here. And in their mind, seeing me throw up their hood so much, they go to jail thinking, it's Spider, that nigga from track. He don't, that's the homie. But I don't know, it's just, that's the way it happened. But there's some people out there that have double affiliations, right? I mean, it's not favorable in the actual gang world. Yeah. It's something that if it happens, you have to have an awesome story for a nigga to understand it, or it's something that niggas just choose to overlook because it's just it's just it's not something that you want to sign up just for. And I don't have an actual double affiliation um, as a rapper, and because I have a double uh, connection and a double citizenship just because if you go from the actual where you're from, as far as take the gang out of it, this is where I'm from, this is my environment. This is where I was born into. I was living there from one from one years old, you know, so it's like, but when you add gang into it, I'm not from right here. So the, I choose to make it a double affiliation on purpose, whether an outsider think it's politically correct or not because I do what the fuck I want to and it's love with those that make over here. I just so happen, I'm from 97th Street. The area I'm from is 97th Street. The area right here is 159th Street. It's like it's just natural to go 1597 for me. So I have a one-man gang. A lot of my track new homies hear me say 1597 and they tell me, yeah, I'm from 1597 too. And I love that. And I want to accept that, but then I have to tell them, really, you not because you're not from 97. I'm from 159th Street. I'm not from Track New Crip, but I am actually literally from 159th Street. I'm from Alondra and Central, but I'm from East Coast Crip though. So it's just a dual citizenship that I developed in a natural process. It wasn't intentional, but as I look up at this point in my career and in my life, this is who I am and these is my niggas. I know some of these niggas better than I know some of my homies. It's just the way it is. We on the nine block. In the bin, down the street from the bin, uh, we on my daddy porch. Keep it one million, keep it a Google. This ain't really my daddy porch no more, but it feel like it because this is the family that took over um, shortly after my father vacated these premises a little over 15 years ago, and they kept it looking exactly the same. And that was a blessing and a curse because I appreciate seeing it look like this, but it also has caused it to never stop feeling like home. Um, this is the reason why I'm from 97th Street. We on 99th Street, down the street from 99th Street Elementary. And uh, that's where we at. So this is where uh, Big Spider came up. Big Spider and Slick, my brother Slick. Yeah. And my cousin slash brother Dice, Michael Black. Was three, three young men that were older than me from my generation that lived in this house that all ended up claiming my hood before me. Well, you end up claiming their hood. 
There you go. There you go. Yeah, exactly. To keep it a Google. My name, I never follow too much of nobody into nothing. I'm like a natural born leader. I enjoy leading. I don't tolerate or set up for anything other than leadership positions and anywhere I go, but I am baby spider under my brother Martel. And he is one individual outside of my father that I can pinpoint all throughout my life I looked up to. He was a, a very uh, dominant, strong alpha male. And uh, he chose to be a gangbanger um, prior to me. And um, the example that I seen him set was uh, excellent, and uh, you know, it was his footsteps that I, I typically or generally follow into the uh, the lifestyle. Although I never actually got the opportunity to be out here with him, actually doing shit together until I was fully fledged, established on my own. It's not like I never was in the streets, running the streets with my brother anywhere near my introduction to the streets. He did never agree with a cosign, cosign me coming over here fucking around. He was trying to keep me away from it. So I had to wait for opportunities when that nigga was in jail. And I used to just pop up and like utilize the relationships that I knew from niggas, you know, when I was a kid growing up. Now, that nigga know me, that nigga know me. And I just came and did my thing without my brother participate. So uh, he found out, obviously, was he in jail or when yeah, he got he used out? To, he used to get phone calls and niggas would be telling me like, man, your brother did whoop whoop whoop. And if you would hear him testify, he'd be like, his response was like, hell no, who? My brother who, Norville? And that's the type of reports he was getting in my activities the way it was blowing his mind because his general idea, he's aware how my mother was attempting to raise me. And I was always their little brother that came over every now and then on the weekends that go to private school that not allowed to eat pork and shit. So they always had like a more of a PG version of what they uh, anticipated I was going to turn out to be. How we go from a tiny airport to a giant airport? We went from little bitty planes to the big planes. Huh? That's another, like, kind of like similarity for me going from here to there, getting drowned out by the airplanes that nobody else could ever relate to, that it was just dip for me. Going from my mama house to my daddy house, the airplanes would drown you out. It was a different magnitude. It was the jets versus the twin engines, but they make way more money than them over there in Compton. This is going to be way more frequent. Yeah. Well, at least that's that LAX thing. For that, for y'all around the world, country who might not know, that's that LAX traffic that's that's sneaking up on us. But over there in Compton, though, they they teaching young black kids how to fly, though. Salute Robin Petgrave, the Tomorrow's Aeronautical uh, Museum, the whole program over there. I've been affiliated with it for 18 years plus. Phenomenal uh, job he's been doing in the inner city, man. I salute it. I feel honored to be have been participated with it for such a long time, and uh, let's keep that shit going. Right here, this is actually my grandmother's house. Another one of the staples in my uh, upbringing. This is like the center point between the hood and my mama house, my elementary and my middle school. If I hop this backyard gate right here, you would be in the school, which the gate separated us from Mark Twain, which is another middle school. Um, it's Mac, Mac, Magic Johnson Park right now. I forget the name before they turned it to Magic Johnson Park, but the Ujima Village, which is now closed down, which uh, was home of the Village Town Pot Rules, is the section we in, also section, which is considered home to uh, Kendrick Lamar. This the folk side. They, they shit split with the deuce and the folk. We on the folk side. My uncle Brody, Brody Lloyd, he was an original folk line, even before they was Piru. He wasn't really a gang member, even though he kind of low-key playing Piru. Rest in peace, Uncle Brody. But this is just another part of my origin, you know. Um, they consider this Compton in general, but the address here, if you had to send a letter, it's L.A. But after school and before school, most of the time, I spent a lot of hours here waiting on my mother to come here, come home after work and all that. So I used to uh, run up and down these streets a lot. I remember uh, just one name I can remember that was real active, young Piru nigga named Rampool. Nigga used to squabble up around this motherfucker a lot when we was coming up. My nigga Mill Ticket used to stay down the street. Niggas know who Mill Ticket is. My little homie, uh, sleep for me, little mate. He was he was raised next door, off the McKinley block. We on McKinley, matter of fact. McKinley is like a theme throughout my life, cause in the hood, it's off McKinley too. But you know, I just keep noticing, ironically, the three points all between Avalon and Central. Kind of like, I want you to tap into the What's Happening song featuring Slim 400 and Compton AD. My verse to kind of explain this whole piece that me and Alex put together uh, on that What's Happening track.
Now, I've always wondered about the Magic Johnson Park. It is so huge. Right. I don't think any one hood can take claim to that park because it's kind of well, That's like, a blood park, my nigga. Don't get it fucked up. <laughs> so that was really... Was that with the, the Millers then? Like, nah, that was like the VTP park, and now it's all of them. AMG, that's the whole, Anthony Millers, like whoever. Just be careful going up there. I guess the West Side probably would claim it more so than anybody, but that's always been a blood park. And uh, what did your grandmother think about all your activities back then? Uh, they don't even cross her radar. Like, uh, her whole thing was don't wrestle in the house. You want to test your strength, take that shit outside. <laughs> now, how far is um, the private school that you went to from here? I could hop the gate. Once I hop the gate. Oh, yeah, because it's next to Mark Twain. Yeah, okay. it's the Mark Twain split. You see they're building new houses over there where Mark Twain used to be. They got a new whole housing development. But, yeah, if you just turn your camera slightly that way, that out overside the gate, that's the school. That's the gymnasium. When I compare my experience from what I think a traditional public school experience would have provided me, I think it allowed me a buffer for uh, me to still be here and be alive today and experience some opportunities because had I been exposed to some of the opportunities my peers were exposed to earlier on, I really had no filter, no limits. It ain't no telling what type of trouble I would have found myself in. So being a more saturated environment where things were a little bit more controlled, I think I had less access to fuck off my future. So I appreciate those experiences immensely. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and thanks for watching StreetTV.net.